Hey everyone, Adam Baker here with a Chamber Check-In sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce of the Tonawandas and Schooly Mitchell, your cost reduction experts. And I am here with Maggie Higgins, the president of Centerpoint Communications. Maggie, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. You know, it's funny, so so those watching don't know, but Maggie and I just, uh, we met met together last, it hasn't even been a week since we saw each other. <laughs> So I'm excited to have you on today. I'm excited for everyone to know kind of what Centerpoint does and, and what you bring to the to the community. Great. Um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I was excited to have this opportunity. Um, Centerpoint Communication is a voice, data, phone system, managed service company um, that supports the businesses locally as well as nationally. And basically, I'm just here as a trusted advisor, hopefully to save some money, consolidate costs, um, look at the efficiencies for the customers and improve their current environment or help them set up if they're opening up a new office. All right. So how long have you guys been around? My company has been in business for just under six years, but I've been in the industry for the last 30. Uh, so you bring 30. a ton of knowledge with you. <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> Now, is that what you would say differentiates you from, from competitors or other businesses? Or, or what do you think gives you your competitive advantage? Well, my dif differentiator, I would say, would be that I've been in the trenches. I've been in the customer service side of it with a host of the pro of the large providers. Um, I've been in the customer service. I've been in the support role. I've been handling the issues, the moves, edge changes, the problems, the sales. And now at this level, being able to work with all of the providers and bring the solution together and really um, I mean, let's face it, most businesses, all businesses are focusing on their bottom line and their their product and what they're trying to do and not always able to look at or aware of what's going on on the back end. So I'm trying to, I am working as a resource um, in order to make things easier for them to navigate the services up front and then continue with the management on the back end. Now, because you've served in so many roles that supported that, is is that why this is so important to you, or is there another motivating factor? Or? <laughs> yes, um, it's important to me because I know what the customer has to deal with. I know how difficult it is if you don't know someone, you don't have connections, and you don't have resources. And you know, most customers don't understand what do you need, what does it mean I need to be secure. They know they need to be, but what does it really mean? I know my phone's not working, or a company's been sold, or gone out of business. What do I do now? I'm stuck with this device on my desk. You know, they know enough, but they don't know how to put all the pieces together. And quite frankly, they probably don't want to deal with it and they need someone who can help. Yeah. So, so you had mentioned a couple questions you get asked, you know, what does it mean to be secure? What would you say is the most common question that you get asked? What do I do? Where do I go? And what's going on in the industry right now? It changes so much yeah. that customers just can't keep up with it. They want to know what they need. They want to know, you know, if I go to the cloud, there's still a lot of traditional customers in Western New York. And, you know, they want that physical device sitting on their desk, but they don't necessarily need it. And they want to know how is it going to be safe? How is their network secure? How is their data secure? And how are you going to make sure that I don't have a problem and that you're there for me? And, and Maggie, you and I, and we talked about this, you know, is is we we try to solve some of the same problems. And, and right. you probably see this where business owners are so focused on their operations that if it ain't broke, I'm not addressing it, right? Even though it's inefficient, it may be expensive, but they say, I've got all of these fires I'm dealing with over here. As long as this isn't a fire, I'm not going to make it. And I assume that that's an opportunity for you to go in and say, listen, you know, I can help you here. You keep focusing on this. I will make sure this doesn't become a fire all for right. you. Exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Exa exactly right. And as in the event that a fire does come up, you know, COVID is a perfect example. Like we try to say we're moving past COVID, but it's such a good example. Like right now we're, you know, we're live here, we're remote. And I've been doing this for so long. So all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, I got to get on my Zoom call. And to me, it was something I was doing. So the customers, a lot of them, I saw the pain of the scrambling. Like, how can I stay in business? How can I keep from going out of business? 
And it was very easy for the customers who migrated over to the current services to just say, okay, I'm going to go home. I'm going to forward my calls. I'm going to make my changes. I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do. And for the others, it was like, thank God I have the resources and the help from you because I really don't know what to do because I should have done it, but I didn't. And I don't want to hear that from you. So here we are, help me kind of thing. So yeah. that's, where that's been a huge advantage too. That's cool. So let me ask you this on personal professional side, you know, you are high energy and you stay, <laughs> you always stay busy. Where do you look to find your sources of inspiration? Honestly, from others in the industry, I mean, there are so many talented people in the industry and we can really learn a lot from each other. And even you and I, like we cross over in our industry. There may be some things I'm very knowledgeable in and other things you're very knowledgeable in, but we can learn from each other. And I, I've always been strong on referrals and co-opetition and trying to find a way to work with the people that I like and from people that I feel comfortable with and that I feel like I can trust and that I know trust me. And then we kind of try to figure things out together. And that has been a huge resource and education, constant education. I represent 400 plus suppliers and there's constant education. And if you don't continue to be educated, you're not going to be a source for your customer either. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It goes back to what you're saying is everything changes so often that you really have does. to stay on that. So you and I, when we first met, we met at a chamber event. Yes. All right. So let me ask you this. What type of chamber events do you enjoy attending? Well, I have the opportunity to be involved in a lot. I've almost five years I've been involved with the directly with the chamber as far as being on the board. And I'm the vice president for the chamber of the Tonawandas. I was born and raised in the Tonawanda, so I know the I know the area pretty well and I have passion for the community and the people. Um if I think with the chamber, you have to be involved, you have to get involved to get your value out of it. Um, it has to work around your schedule. There's morning events that we have for networking is where you and I had the opportunity to meet. There's evening events. Um, there's meet and greet events. There's lunch and learn type of things that we have. There's award ceremony where I love that because we get the opportunity to showcase those in the community and the members get to vote. So they're there supporting each other and, you know, cheering each other on and hoping to get awarded themselves, you know, maybe the following year at some time in the future. So there is a lot to do. There's a lot to get involved. And this specific chamber is always open to ideas and suggestions. So if there's something you want to do or something different that you want to bring to the table, it's always welcome. And it's a very, very, very good um, group of people and golf. Well, I'm not a great golfer. I call it the shamble scramble. So I like to do that, but that's a good event to get involved in. And then we usually have a big event on the water in the summer. So that's a, another good event, but really it's just, it's a lot of fun. You get the people together and um, you get to know, the same people, but you also get to know new people. So it's a really, really good group. Now, would you say that <laughs> joining the chamber, the chamber was really, really important when you were starting your business or it was, it's more important now that you're, you know, kind of established. How would you say that the, the membership in the chamber has benefited your business? Both because at the beginning, I think um, even though, my name is probably known in the industry and I've been in the industry in this area specifically. Um, a lot of people say, okay, yeah, you sell voice, you sell data services, you know, wh what do I need and how do I need it? Um, the chamber has been able to showcase those services and allow me to utilize the members, go back to the members and provide resources to go to economic development meetings and different resource things. So I can, you know, stay up to date on what's going on in the community. So that has helped a lot. And um, sometimes, you know, as a, as a small business getting started out, um, you may have a lot of contacts and relationships, but it's good to have the resources and the motivation from the people within the chamber that offer additional resources that you maybe didn't know you needed, you know, different benefits, different services and things like that. They have so much to offer. Agreed. Now you may have a different insight into this question than most because you sit as the vice president, but what are your top tips for success when it comes to utilizing the chamber? 
get involved. I mean, um, I, I will be the first one to admit that in the mornings, because of my schedule, I hadn't been able to attend the morning networking. So I didn't really know what was going on there. And when I walked in this week, because I'm now able to attend, I met a couple of the people that I already knew. I learned some things about the businesses that I didn't already know. I was able to utilize them for marketing related services and print type services that I could have given to someone else, but the price is the same or better. So I'm supporting the community and they're thinking about me too. You know, they're thinking about me and my business and how we can work together. Um, so that's very, very important. And it's valuable to be able to do that and to get involved, but you have to be involved. If you're not involved, it's, it's not going to work. It, anything is that way. If you don't do the work and get involved, you're not going to have the success that comes with it. Maggie, and you try Maggie, different things. Some work, some don't, right? Some, everybody's like, it's um, it's funny. So after, after that event on Wednesday morning, um, I got an email Wednesday afternoon. Someone had gone to my website and asked about payroll services. Was well, you know, payroll is not something I do, right. but I was fortunate that I met someone that did payroll yes. right there. And yeah. I said, Hey, and so I reached out and I was able to connect those That's two. Great. Had I not attended though, I would have said, Oh, I don't know what to tell you. You know, yeah. and, and so you're absolutely right. The power of just meeting those new people, you, you see the people you're established with, you meet the new yeah. people. And it, it's definitely a benefit, not to j just to your business, but to the community as a whole. And I ran into somebody that I did business with in um, health care 20, what were we saying, like 20 years ago. And he was a large customer of mine. He's now retired, affiliated um, with the, with several other charities and ways that I can work with him in the future and that we can do things with each other. And it was just a good resource. And I didn't, I lost track over the years and didn't know what he was doing. So it was really, you know, going to that event, open that door again. That's awesome. Now here's the hardest part of our conversation, Maggie. <laughs> If the audience only gets 30 seconds to see what we're talking about, what would you want them to know? That they can trust me, that I know the industry. Um, I'm here to support them. If you do the right thing, the money comes. You know, obviously my goal is to make sure that you're protected so that I can sleep at night and so that you can sleep at night and that you have anything relative to it voice data and support services that you're protected to the rest to the best of your ability. And that I, that I'm, I'm your resource and your advisor and that you can come to me. And if I don't have the answer and it's not something that I do, just like you were saying about your business, I will make sure I get you to the right person. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for taking the time. So Maggie Higgins, president of center point communications. And if they want to get in touch with you, it's Maggie.Higgins at centerpointcommunications.com. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Maggie. I appreciate it, Adam. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.